staggering of Sony cameras inside Lightroom Classic, and it's not a hack, it's not a workaround, it's finally an official update. So now you can control and shoot remotely images with your Sony camera and Lightroom will import them automatically. It is perfect if you're doing a studio session and you want to review the images super fast. I'm going to show you how to set it up, how it works, and how to fix the issues when the camera is not recognized. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, memory. And in this channel, I help with the tech tools to be creative. Now, what you need. First of all, you need to update your Lightroom Classic to version 13.3. If you don't know your current version, you can go to help about Lightroom Classic and you're going to be able to see it there. If it's not 13.3, you can go to the Creative Cloud app and just tell it to update. Second, an USB cable that fits your camera. Usually USB-C cable and the end on the computer can be whatever you got. Since the files are going to be transported via the cable, the faster the cable, the better it's going to be. And mainly you need a camera that is compatible with tethering inside Lightroom Classic. This update is regarding Sony cameras. But also if you have any of these cameras that you see on the screen right now, it's going to work. More specifically about Sony, all the A1s, A9s, all the A7S III, A7 IV, A7R4 and up, A7C and up, and A6700. Now the way it works is quite simple. You go to File, Tethered Capture and start Tethered Capture. Now you get this dialog box in which you're going to be able to choose the name of the session, where these files are going to go, if you want any metadata to be applied to the photos immediately, or any kind of preset. Click OK and Lightroom is going to try to find your camera. On the camera side, all you need to do is connect it with the USB cable and choose PC Remote. In the camera menu, you're going to have some options that you can choose from. Just go to the connectivity menu, which is this globe right here, and go to the remote shooting settings. First, you're going to be able to choose the destination of the files, if just destination, which is the computer, or the camera, or both of them. If you choose camera only, Lightroom won't import anything, but at least you can view the camera through the computer, using the live view. If you choose destination only, meaning only the computer, you don't even need an SD card in the camera. Or you can opt for both. You can choose to transfer the RAW and the JPEGs or only one of them. And in the case of the JPEG, you can choose to send over a 2 megapixels file or the original one. In the case of transferring both of them over, you're gonna notice that if you chose a preset to be applied in the RAW file, you're just gonna have all the developed settings applied to it, which you can change later. And the JPEG is gonna have those burnt in. Just choose whichever suits you best. And if you don't wanna see both of them inside Lightroom like this side by side, you can just filter by text using JPEG or ARW to filter them out. Now, if you're a lucky shooter, after setting it all up, you're gonna see the dialog box disappear and this control bar popping up from which you can control your camera right now from the computer or notebook. But if you're not that lucky and you're stuck in this dialog box, I'm gonna show Now, if you didn't skip and you're still here, you're in trouble. So, in my Mac, I just connected and it worked perfectly. But there are some little troubleshooting things that you can do, especially for Windows, to make it work. First of all, Adobe recommends the basic troubleshooting, which is restarting your computer after the update, turning off and on the camera, using formatted SD cards, and trying different USB ports and cables, just to be sure. But on Windows, there seems to be a bigger issue, a driver issue. So hold the Windows key and press S and search for Device Manager. With the camera still connected, on, and with PC Remote selected, you should see in the list an item called LibUSBK. Inside of it, you're gonna see Sony Remote Control Camera. Right-click it and go to Update Driver. Now you're gonna browse for drivers in your computer, ask to pick from a list of drivers on your computer, and choose MTP USB Device. This is going to change the way that Windows handles your camera and it's gonna make Lightroom finally work with the tethering option. You can just go right now and try to fire it up again and you're gonna see that it works. Also right now inside the device manager you shouldn't see the LibUSBK anymore, you should see the name of your camera up here. Okay, as you can see I have quite a simple setup here. I just have the A7 IV connected to the computer with a USB-C to USB-C cable and one object to shoot. I'm also gonna be capturing the screen so that you can see exactly what I see through the camera and also on the computer. So first thing we gotta do is choose Remote Shoot PC Remote on the camera. Then that, you're going to be able to see this control bar over here, but you're not going to see the screen yet of the camera. You have to click on Live. And then now you're going to be able to see what the camera is seeing. I'm just going to make it larger to make it easier. Put this control bar over here. 
And right now Auto Focus is not active, but I'm going to activate it by clicking in this AF button right here. And immediately it pulls focus and you can already see what's on camera. Now here you're gonna have several different controls. Here on the left, you have which camera you're gonna be connected to. In this case, there is only one. This is to activate the live view and the AF button I showed you is to activate and deactivate the autofocus option. You can change the shutter so you can make it faster and hence darker. You can change also the aperture, but you can only change it if you deactivate the autofocus mode. You're gonna notice that on Lightroom in the computer, you don't actually see that it's locked into something, but on the camera, you're gonna be able to see that the focus is active and fixed on the face. It's almost like you're half pressing the shutter button, so you can change the aperture right now. So I'm going to deactivate it here, and slowly, slowly, you're gonna be able to be seeing the difference. Just gonna leave it at 2.8. You can change also the ISO if necessary. White balance here is an automatic, but you can change to whatever you need. And here you have the develop settings, where you're gonna see all the presets that are installed inside your Lightroom Classic. In my case, I'm just going to choose one of my user presets here, like this Portra 400. If you want to recheck some of the settings, you can just click this gear over here and you have the same dialog box that you saw before. And now you can simply shoot using the computer by clicking this shutter button over here. And that's it. Now you're going to be able to see what happened here. Lightroom already imported both of the shots, the raw file over here and the JPEG file. And let me minimize this to be able to show you better. This is the raw file and you're going to see that it has all of the settings applied already about the preset that I used. So now you're going to be able to see that I have the RAW file and the JPEG file over here. It imports them automatically because I chose on the camera that I wanted both of them to be transferred over to the computer. So if I right click and go to show in Explorer, you're going to see that in the folder that you chose in the that dialog box, you're going to be able to see both of them here numbered sequentially. Now, if you're reviewing your photos, you don't really need to see both of them at this stage. You just want to see one of them, maybe the RAW. So what I can do to show only one of them is come up here and go to text and here you can choose any searchable fields, contains all and you can choose ARW if you want to see only the raw files or JPEG if you just want to see the JPEG files. In my case, I'm just going to choose the raw files and I'm going to take a couple more shots here. And as you can see, it's quite fast to shoot and import the files directly into Lightroom and apply the preset. So if you really want to nail your focus and be sure about the depth of field you're using for the object you're shooting, this is perfect. So basically, this is a way in which you can be very precise about your shots. The only real limitation being that you're connected with a cable to a computer or a notebook. So depending on what you need to do, just think about the length of the cable that is going to be required for you to have the freedom you need. Alright, thanks a lot for watching and since you're probably a Lightroom and Sony user, you're gonna like this video over here that YouTube is recommending you right now. If you have any doubts or questions, just type them in the comment section below and I'll be glad to help you guys. Alright, I'll see you over there.